introduce yourself briefly and、Welcome. share your connection to Kekaje Tsundamba in Poche. Welcome. My registered name is Tukse Tulku. Tuk means mind. Se means son. S O N. So it's like a translates、uh, son of mind, isn't it?、Yeah. It's、uh, connected with the ninth Kekaje Tsundamba. This title, Rinpoche or Tulku, is the, like, like that. It's the title, isn't it?、Mm-hmm. So I'm the oldest son of Kekaje Tsundamba Rinpoche. Now at the moment, I'm, I reside in, in Mongolia for the last 12, 13 years. You already mentioned your relationship to Kekar Rinpoche. Of course, there are many memories、uh, with Rinpoche.、Mm-hmm. But can you recall a favorite memory or anecdote or teaching moment with Kekar Rinpoche, which、mm-hmm. has left your lasting impression?、Mm-hmm. Just conclusion regarding the now, now life of Kakar Rinpoche, and I can remember. Since when I was childhood, because at those days I'm born in Tibet in 1958. In 1959, I came refugee. So when I come to India refugee, I was a baby. So I have no memory recall. I'm、mm-hmm. grown up in, in India. And as a refugee, those days, any other Tibetan refugee, we have to go through refugees' life. My memory with the Kakar Mise, I've seen that he has gone through not a really religious life, it's like, like a normal life. Normal life means like, like everybody, we do every, everything, whatever everybody does. On those days, thinking back, I noticed that he doesn't matter how difficult life is, how tough, because he's a family man. The family man t a k e care of his family. And,、uh, but I don't think k a r m u j has that, that knowledge or that skill to do the normal family's things. But he did whatever, everything, whatever he had to do, he did everything. Life is very, very difficult because、uh, in the past life, he has lived his life quite respectable because he's a、uh, k a k a r m u j So in Tibet, he lived his life. Maybe a religious way, but it's also a respectable way because of his title, man. He's a high master, so he has got all the monasteries, he's got all the entourage, and this and that, like a normal, maybe, you know, this life, lifestyle of the high r i n b u j e s So he lived that lifestyle. But when he c o m e to India, in the early days, he h a v e something before people thinking, or maybe after one year, two years. People believe we are going back, returning back. Tibet will be you know, normal again. So, after one year, two years ago, three years ago, it didn't happen. So, people have to continue to live as refugees, like everybody else.、But、I noticed、uh, later, I, I was thinking, doesn't matter how tough the life is, and especially because he lived his life quite respectable in the past, isn't it? And he's a very knowledgeable, ed- educated, very cap- capable, capable, but somehow, He has to live life a little bit、uh, more tough than the normal people. Still, he holds his name, but、uh, his lifestyle is not matching with his knowledge and, and his entitlement. And he has no choice. And so he's trying to make the livelihood like any other people. Those days, struggling life, lifestyle, you are doing farming, you are taking care of animals, chickens, and cows. Not a many chickens or not a many cows. You have only family, you got only one cow, two cows, or a few chickens, things like that. And you're cultivating as well, growing foods, and, and like this, holding rest. Anyway, life has gone through because he was、uh, many, many children. I mean, life is quite、uh, challenging. But I've noticed that he's always、uh, you know, relaxed and enjoying himself.、Uh, for me, I, I was thinking, How possible you can be relaxing and enjoying, happy? Because you know, your family's life is going through the miserable in the normal sense. Even you don't have a normal proper food or no proper shelter and no proper clothing, not only for himself, even for the, all the children. But I've noticed when I'm little grown up, oh, he's always happy. And I was just, you know, I think this is because of his maybe internal quality. He, can, he still can be happy and relaxed. And he accepts the situation.、Mm-hmm. Uh, last time <laughs> you mentioned Kekar Rinpoche had、uh, many, many works or jobs. Can you give us some examples of what the Rinpoche did? We have done the farming, cultivating, growing like a farmer lifestyle. We do the farming, we do the small, how to say, like a jumper business, selling sweeter means on, on the street. In the past, before that, we also did cow milking. We have got only maybe two, three cows, not a many cows, not a big dairy thing. So just survival cows. Just you sell maybe a few liters of milk. 
every day so you get this and you got chickens also we do some other maybe restaurant restaurants are also like just name you know not not a real restaurant just selling food like noodles and momos like that or we also just selling some sort of candies jaggery brown sugar wow. cook, cook them make candies making these are just only a street things not a really a proper the candies for the local you know just on the way just is a home homemade and you just sell on your window and jaggeries like that and we also did some other things like a nomad and kakar muji he used to have a one maybe a rucksack carry on the back exactly. inside yeah. the bag inside the bag we have got a selling the place called darjeeling Yeah. Lighting is a tea garden state. Those who uh, respect him, they also help to make his livelihood, showing him some sort of a you know way to how to make the livelihood. So he have got a rock sack. Inside the rock sack, we sell in India. Girls they wear bangles, glass bangles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like yeah. yeah, and some sort of a safety pins and a small, small like a girls this. Um, yeah. Like uh, these are very very cheap cheap things. Okay, just for the village people, you have got a one one rucksack, then you go from the tea garden stage. He used to carry his rucksack inside. He the the days have got his his items for the sale. We are selling to the tea garden stage people. Yeah. So I mean, tea garden stage people are also very poor. Okay, so mm-hmm. they 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 get I think monthly or weekly salary. So we have to match on that day to get there to. Outside their their house, their factory, so people get their salary. Those who are working at tea estate, when they come out at the next to the gate, um, uh, um, maybe Kakarimbujan, one two people are there doing same things. They've mm-hmm. got the rock set and they're opening up their few maybe items, and they, they this salary they receive salary and they'll buy some girls they will like a buy bangles or these simple simple things some needles sewing needles then we can move it's it's like a like a mobile how to say market when you think back it's also funny is that you go to all this village in the village we stop over to the some family on on the way and family village people they will also give us shelter to sleep on their veranda Yeah, during huh. those periods, was Rinpoche invited by the local Tibetans? Some Tibetans does the puja for the householders. Was he known to the local people, or quite a hidden or secret? They didn't know who he was. Yeah, so. yeah. Most most of the time, local people know Tibetan community. A uh, place like Darjeeling, those old people he knows, they already know. Him. He's a he's a high, high lama, huh? but people everybody cannot do anything, isn't? Everybody is refugee, everybody knows. Of course, some new places first people don't know he's Rajabuche, but they will maybe new people they will think oh maybe he is something because mm-hmm. of his, his appearance and how he behave. You know, people think oh maybe he is something, but even though they don't know exactly Kagarabuche because that people have got something in their mind suspicious. Maybe it's a not a normal Tibetan people. Just by seeing, I think they think maybe it's something. So yeah, of course. Then after slowly, then people will find out what's his name, what this and that. Then they'll f- figure out he's the he's the one of the maybe a rebuche. Yeah, I have one um, cassette tape. You know, back old days we use cassette right to record the voice. That recording was the rebuche uh, playing the chur in Darjeeling. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can see the background, all the rickshaws going back and forth, as if he's doing a <laughs> neat mm. section of the, on the street. So noisy, you know, there's uh, rickshaws or some honking, or uh, then mm. he's playing that. I have seen the damaris hang on the pillar or on 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 the wall. But I have no knowledge. We are young, we are, and I haven't come across seeing that he's you know, doing the ritual practice. Yeah. Chanting too, yeah. but I see him doing all the other prayers, mm. like every month something like I think it's a talk. Those days we have I have no no knowledge. I like talk and dagang means every month they do some sort of a protector prayers. Mm. He used to you know, have a big drum and all these things. He do do by himself uh, himself every uh, those days. You donating your uh, kidney for Doctor mm. Rinpoche? Could mm-hmm. you just Mention that a little bit. When I was in Nepal, I have received a call saying that Okarimbuje oh, got a kidney failure and he's in the hospital in Delhi. So I just came back to India. Then later, I we have fi- uh, figured out 
come come to know is the best if your family is matching that then i thought oh that's good good idea quick then i thought oh, maybe uh, that's i should do do if, if this is the case good why not then uh, for, for me yeah so, i'm so grateful what the uh, took the rinpoche has done because yeah. since the 90s i knew keka rinpoche i was student of him and praying and then i heard took the rinpoche donated the kidney <laughs> for the rinpoche Oh my gosh, I was so happy and grateful for what you've done. And since then, you know, really, Rinpoche was able to perform the enlightened activities, especially in relation to Mongolia, more and more. If yep. you haven't done that, then must be different matters. And so I'm so grateful in terms of continuation of this lineage and the Kika Rinpoche's transmissions and so forth. And so it's uh, due to the kindness of you, Rinpoche. So after that, anyway, kidney transplant, he lived a uh, maybe normal life. Mm. And till his last time, he don't have any kidney problem. And he have other conditions. And I'm happy that this solved this problem. And he lived a normal life in Dharamsala. And he did his, you know, just uh, which you are already mentioned, he did his dharma. And maybe a church continues, isn't it? So that's quite good. Wow, an amazing story, Rinpoche. Uh, if you could talk a little bit about Oser Rinpoche and his role with preserving this lineage and his role currently in Mongolia. Oser Rinpoche has received this church lineage from, from the Kaka Rinpoche. He has done all this retreat. You go to the outside for the five, six months. These are, the, I would say, one of the important part of the of the church lineage. Church receiving the initiation, you are doing the inner uh, retreat and outside retreat is something to do with the with the traveling outside on the Chumi spring water. So, in Mongolia now, after the Kagarmja passed away, uh has also and maybe almost every year he's giving the church initiation to the, the people, this church lineage. So. I remember Hatsun Rinpoche and uh, Oseo Rinpoche were together first time when I met them. I was surprised and also I was overjoyed. Wow, mm. there's a successor here. And he's quite a relief. Actually, he's managed to be able to transfer or transmit the lineage to the next generation because in the past he's a little bit concerned he is the only master in india the one who hold this lineage on Kagarumje in gandhi's children and he's worried now he's a lay person and his situation was you know living instantly like a not not like a normal high lama he's living like a normal and no nobody's uh, requesting or receiving his teaching and he could not tell people to no one that you come and receive. He's a little bit worried. I think those days, now I'm the last lineage I could not transmit. And now it is a sad, this important, very blessing lineage. If not able to transfer, his lineage will be a broken lineage, isn't it? So I think he's a little bit worried. So and since he managed to do this to the in Dharamsala, he managed to do this initiation to the many people, also like you which mentioned, the Islamists who said Rinpoche, Lhapsun Rinpoche, and there are some other maybe great, great Tibetan maybe masters, teachers. He's carrying this like a luggage and he's managed to drop his luggage. Doesn't matter, now able to, next generation able to carry or not, at least he has transferred it to the reasonable people. So in our mm -hmm. community, we also try our best to practice the church, mm -hmm. and the church, mm -hmm. and also Dakini church. Those of us who are watching you and our conversation mm -hmm. might get inspired if you have something to say, message mm -hmm. to us who are trying our best to practice this lineage in the West. Mm -hmm. We are not perfect, but we are trying to carry this tradition. Mm -hmm. and beautiful lineage and the unique church lineage we appreciate so much so if mm -hmm. you have any message or anything to say to us that'd be awesome the church lineage is very very important Kandula, you already know maybe more teaching about church than me i have received very little okay because i was always going away going here and there and 
Of course, I've received the initiations, but don't make a special effort. Some may be a great master. They'll make an effort to go there from here to there. They'll make an effort to receive these teachings and initiations. Before me, it, I didn't do that. It's just for me, it's happened. Just I was there, so I just received that. I don't make any effort. So I'm a very lazy practitioner, okay? Spiritual lineage, is, you already know, it's about the wisdom, known as like a combination of sutra and tantra. In the Buddhist practice, is uh, normally you have already received uh, teaching from Kagalam, which has already, already mentioned in the past, in the Tibet, some people in the Tibet great monasteries, people, some lamas will, will tell to some lama, they, they'll say, oh, now I'm going to do the church practice. Then the master will say, are you sure you are ready for that? It means you have to reach quite a high level of practice. Of course, the highest yoga tantra is, is the highest practice, and you have to be qualified for that, isn't it? But anyway, it's uh, all, all the uh, these practices are, are like the, its main goal is the same about the realization of emptiness, wisdom, and the bodhicitta is a combination of these, these two methods in all the buddhist whichever deity you practice these two are the essence to achieve this bodhicitta and the wisdom isn't and the chair has got a practice not going round 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 it's going straight to achieve this bodhicitta and the wisdom wisdom of emptiness isn't so it's a straightforward practice, but very, very skillfully, very practical. And also it's a melody. Mm -hmm. Melody is also very, very important. When we've got the melody itself is the, is the composed by the, by the great masters. It has got uh, so much influence for the individual church practitioners. When you do the melody, according to the verses, melody also connect to that echo. If it's a refuge verses, According to the refuge verses, melodies, according to that. Chu has got a, like an in instrument and the melodies. Melodies are the, something unique for the Chu. And the melodies will give us time to concentrate on whatever we are practicing, mm -hmm. reciting. It will give us, not only give us, it will give us emotion on, on that, mm -hmm. with that. Not only just your serious, maybe, uh, maybe you know, thinking, but it will help us to feel that experience that emotion on that whichever area which comes comes across because melodies are composed for that mm -hmm. and uh, anyway it's also oh, for the ear hearing nice very good hearing anyway ear so yeah, these melodies are composed by the great masters so sweet i have to say sweet like a nice hearing it says even animals going around it says it will stop and listen and maybe all this one is a non-human beings that are going around they says when you're doing this uh, this maybe uh, not only you are experiencing that even the non-human spirits are also stop there and join your listening <laughs> Yeah. Listen, of course, maybe it doesn't matter whether non-human beings are, is maybe a, maybe a gentle one or rough one, non-human human difference. Some are like a bad spirit or maybe, you know, these disturbed non-humans. Some are maybe gentle, peace, maybe things. doesn't matter whether you are a rough one or a bad one or a good one. Everybody have time to stop and just, you know, uh, listen to this music. And so music or this, or this on the, or the chanting. So everybody's receiving this on same blessing. Yeah. Thank you so mm. much for a wonderful mm. teaching, Rinpoche. Cameron asked about the future of this lineage. Conclusion, I mean, there is a, it's a bright future. Uh, Ten both again, still young. Of course, mm. time comes. He will also maybe continue this lineage. At the moment, of course, there are many, Rinpoche and many other lamas. Lamas are also following that lineage, isn't it? So the future is good, good for everybody. And of course, Kandula, you are also doing this, which is very, very good, whether in USA or Japan. So please, you continue. Each and everybody, wherever we are, where whatever you do, you carry that that lineage. It's good and benefit for the people, isn't it? For you, for you, practice, okay, you, we got uh, enough teachings. You are already practicing sufficient knowledge. And, uh, you are uh, sufficient for yourself, but it's important to try to help others as much as can, isn't it? Yeah, thank you so yeah. much. Thank you very much, okay. Rinpoche. Thank you.